Yürü. Well, it's Saturday the 30th of March and we are starting our 2024 journey along the West Highland Way. Um, it's currently nine o'clock, so I'm hoping to be in Drummond a wee bit earlier tonight. Uh, for those of you who want to know how much I'm carrying on my back at the minute, including all the camera gear, we have 19 kilograms, which seems excessive, but generally most people won't be carrying so much of the drone equipment and the camera equipment. So. Yes, quite excited about this one, so join us as we head along the trail for 2024. So I've just left a very busy Mulgai town centre. There seems to be lots of people starting the trail today. That's It's a Saturday, uh, what do you expect? Uh, but yeah, really excited to be back on the trail again. So today is going to be a relatively short one. We're heading from Mulgai just into Drimmon today. Um, Back there, I didn't film it, but there's uh, water you can get right at the very beginning out of one of those uh, Scottish water taps. We've got the, the favourite drink, not sponsored by them, but uh, Dr Pepper if you're watching. Um, yeah, so there's loads of people obviously on trail today. It's the, the Easter holidays here, uh, Good Friday was yesterday, and lots of people obviously using their time wisely, as far as I'm concerned, and heading off along the West Highland Way. So today is relatively short. We're heading from here to Drummond, which is about 11 miles. Um, there will be a stop at the Beech Tree Cafe about lunchtime to get something to eat. And I'm hoping to be in Drummond for about three o'clock. So yes, glad to be back out on the trail. Join us as we head along. So just at the beginning of Mugduck Park, you're going to come across these. If I can find out more information about them, they're little kind of polished stones sitting on top of a kind of plinth thing. They're really quite cool. Um, oh, actually, here we go. This tells us a bit more about them. So Scholar Rocks. Located across rural sites, the highly glazed, hand-built ceramic rocks make connections to East Dumbartonshire's geology and industries that once utilised resources provided by the landscapes. So there you go. It's to do with the, the industries of East, East Dumbartonshire. You know, I've done the, the West Hill Way now three years in a row and I hadn't spotted that back there, so that was a wee bit interesting. So they're, they're kind of dotted along the side of the path as you head up the hill. You'll leave the, the side of the River Kelvin and uh, yeah, that's the first wee cool thing. There's there's more to go today uh, that I'll, I'll show you and tell you about. But anyway, <laughs> we started off with exactly the same weather as I've had the last two years. Um, 2022, we started off with broken cloudy skies, a bit of blue skies in between. Same in 2023. I have got my fingers crossed that this is going to be another one of those years where I get the good weather. Here's another one of those wee things. I'll turn you around and let you see. So yeah, I usually snag myself a bottle of juice and a sausage roll because the last couple of years I've started on Sunday. Now the only thing about Sunday is also the Sunday train services aren't um, as uh, frequent as the Saturday ones, so if you're coming to do this, you'll have a later start. Uh, I think the first train gets you in at about 10 or 11 o'clock, whereas, I mean, I got dropped off this morning by uh, my other half, um, 
So I was on trail for, for nine, but there was loads of folk jumping off the train this morning at nine o'clock and meeting the baggage transfer people. Uh, so yeah, that's just something to keep in mind as you plan your trip. <laughs> that's me just past a couple who are already taking off the puffy jackets. Uh, when you're carrying all your gear in your back. Oh, give me a second. Oh, that's the first wee hill done. Uh, always gets the lungs going when you do that first hill out of uh, Mug Duck Park. So back at the start of the, the trail there, I got chatting to two of the locals who were enjoying a wee can of something for a Saturday morning, pretty early for to be starting on the booze. But anyway, we got chatting to them and one of them had been mentioning how he'd cycled the whole West Highland Way in one go. Uh, and I got speaking to him about a guy we knew from the Scottish cycling circuit, Rab Bordell. So yeah, Rab was a, a well-kent face within the Scottish cycling circuit. And uh, there was a bit of a uh, competition friendly competition between Gary MacDonald and uh, Rab for who was going to hold that title of cycling the West Highland Way the fastest. Rab managed to complete it 9 hours, 14 minutes and 32 seconds. Um, we sadly lost Rab. Um, he was some athlete. Uh, he'd actually cycled the day before he, he passed. He'd cycled from Glasgow down to Kiritri to compete in the, uh, the Scottish Championships for the cycling where he won the Scottish Championships and then just for a, a bit of a cool down cycled back from Kiritri down in the borders back to Glasgow and sadly that night Rab passed a uh, tragic loss to the cycling community but I would encourage you if you've not seen um, the video of Rab's world breaking cycling attempt along the West Highland Way. You need to go and have a look at this. The guy was an absolute machine and is sadly missed by many. But uh, yeah, I couldn't cycle the West Highland Way. I'm not fit enough. But uh, Rab was, you know, one of these special beings that was able to do it. So yeah, those uh, two locals were quite amazed when I told them how quickly he'd managed it. Uh, I don't think if they're drinking at uh, nine o'clock in the morning, they're going to be smashing that record anytime soon. Anyway, so we've already bumped into a few people. Uh, two lovely ladies from the north of Germany who are aiming to complete it in five days while camping the whole way and have got no expectation on where they're staying each night. So. It's quite a good way to do it, quite liberating, I guess. Uh, the weather has been really kind. Still got the blue sky above us. It's not quite time to put the sunnies on yet, but... Yeah. I didn't sleep very well last night. You know, I've said this before. Uh, when Ryan and I were doing Ben Vorlick and Stuka Croin, if you haven't seen that video already, uh, I mentioned how days when I'm hiking up hills or going on these long distance hikes, it kind of feels like Christmas to me. Uh, I get like an excited wee kid and today's no different. <laughs> so yeah, great to be back out on trail. Right, we're about to come up on a, another wee monument up here, which I'll tell you more about so that when you pass it, you've got a little bit of information as to what it's all about. Right, I'll let you see when we get further up. That's us just coming up on Craig Alley and Loch. Which is used as a wee fisheries. There's a few people down there having a wee rest. Just catching their breath for the first little bit. Not a wee bad spot to stop and have a picnic. Yeah, usually you see people uh, up here fishing. Which is kind of strange that they're not up here today because it is a beautiful morning. Although I remember a fisherman once telling me that uh, it's sometimes better to have rain because then the fish can't see the difference between the, the raindrops. 
and uh, the flies that you're casting out. I don't know, not a fisherman, so couldn't tell you. Anyway, we've got blue sky ahead of us, and life's good. So just by Craigalley and Loch you'll see this little monument which is uh, a testament to the fire sitters who used to tend the fires here back in the 1930s and uh, there was an unspoken rule that you could arrive at any point and enjoy the heat of the fire, share a cup of tea and listen to stories from the kind of more experienced walkers and mountaineers and has become a beacon for the kind of outdoor community in this local area. And just like that, I've had a costume change. Uh, we've just had a wee torrential downpour as we came past the the car breath huts. Um, I'm going to spin you around. I've made a wee improvement to the trail since I was on this last year. We now have a path at the road section between the car breath huts and as you head up towards the highlands. We have blue sky heading our way. We've just had that go over the top of us. So yeah, everything's a little bit on the soggy side. Uh, yeah, we'll keep the waterproofs on until the rain goes off and we dry off a wee bit and uh, it's still raining at the minute so I'm going to tuck the camera gear away stop it getting wet because we've got a long way to go right just about to head off the road and up into the highlands So if you are coming to do the West Highland Way, this is something that you need to watch out for. Uh, in this area, just as you're heading down to the Drumgoyne Distillery, you need to watch out because there is nesting very aggressive haggis. Yeah, just watch out for them <laughs> as you're doing this section. Right, the rain is going off a little. Uh, and I'm hoping we might be able to do a wee bit more filming. I've got the camera in my hand just now because I, uh, I put it in these zippy lock bags. That seems to keep everything dry. But uh, yeah, I've not done a heap of filming in the last two or three miles just because the weather's bogging. So yeah, not far to the Drumgoyne distillery um, and then the beach tree in for a wee bite to eat for lunch. So we'll bring you back a wee bit further down because it's still raining. We'll get the camera equipment put away. Right, speak to you later. Well, that was a mistake filming that river back there. I had a coffee before I left the house this morning, and then another one from Greg's before we started, and a bottle of uh, Dr Pepper, so... Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting to the beach tree in right now, and that's all I'll say on that matter. So, yeah, we're uh, about six miles in now, uh, and just passing up ahead, you'll see the Glen Goyne Distillery, um, which, if you're wanting to walk across the field, you can pop in and have a wee dram of uh, Glen Goyne whiskey. So, yeah, I've uh, taken the opportunity to plough on ahead a little bit. There are loads of folk on the trail today, and there was a whole bunch of uh, Highland cows standing next to the trail, so... There's about 20 people all standing filming those. Uh, and I thought, you know, it would be lovely to let you guys see Highland Cows, but I'm sure you've seen a Highland Cow before. I'll put a picture up now. Yeah, that's a Highland Cow. Um, 20 of them taking photographs, and I thought, you know what? Let's take this opportunity to get past this big crowd of people and uh, make some progress on. So, yes, yeah, thankfully the rain's gone off. Still got the waterproofs on at the minute just to let them dry out before I get them back in the bag, but it's going to be one of these strips, I think. Uh, anyway, it's damp underfoot. Lots of people on the trail, so my thinking is if I keep going and stop for a few rests, because I'm feeling fit, I'm feeling strong at the minute. Uh, no hot spots on the feet, fingers crossed. Um, I might even be the first one to drum in camping, or certainly one of the first that drum in camping, uh, which means I get to 
pick my spot uh, before the masses descend and the campsite gets a bit busier, so yeah. I'm gonna keep plowing on, make some progress and get to gym and camping early where I'm gonna meet a uh, friend of mine, Stuart, and possibly his partner, Mary, um, for dinner tonight. I don't know whether both of them are coming or one of them's coming, but we'll wait and see. So at least if I get to drum in early, I'll be able to get all unpacked, get freshened up and book a table for reasonably early. And then we can get an early night since I had about four hours sleep last night because I was so excited. But, uh, yeah, it feels like we're properly heading into the Highlands now, which is nice. Uh, I always think that first bit through Mugduck Park, you've got all the local people walking their dogs, joggers, and all sorts, so it still feels kind of busy. But uh, once you get through that, that fence, and you see the hills ahead of you, it feels like the trail's just starting. Right. Just up here is the Glen Goyne Distillery. Well, that's us, we're seven miles in, and we've just seen the first signs for the beech tree, which signals me to have my first stop of the day. I'm gonna have a quick bite to eat, quick refuel, and a toilet stop, and then on to drumming. Yeah, it's just as well muddy boots are welcome because, uh, yeah, the trail's a wee bit damp since that rain. Yeah, this is the, I'll show you them as further up, the, the famous mini Shetland ponies who are diabetic, so don't feed them anything because they're on a special diet. You've walked about seven miles, come see your smells, have a cup of tea and try out your platter. It doesn't matter, there's a warm welcome at the beech tree. So as we get up here, I'll let you see where you can uh, refill your water. So far, I haven't, I haven't carried any water with me. I had that bottle of... Uh, Dr Pepper that I got in the little spa shop just in the centre of Mulgai. I've had two cups of coffee this morning and I'm about to refill with another drink here so I'll probably not carry any water in my pack today as we go um, just because you don't need to but I'll let you see where the tap is outside here uh, just before we pop in to use their facilities and get a few snacks or bites to eat. Right, this is the beech tree in. If you're not familiar with John Muir, it's worth doing a wee bit of history on that. The John Muir Way opened not that long ago, maybe 10, 15, maybe more years ago. And this is part of the John Muir Way, which heads from Helensborough to Dunbar and on the side of the beech tree. It's got a little bit of information about the John Muir Way, since this is also on the on the route, just trying to find that outside tap that you can use. There definitely is one. Ah, here it is. Spotted it. So it's just along from the, the entrance to the beech tree in, uh, right next to the seating area, which there's loads of folk at. So I'm going to grab something quick to eat and keep cracking on. So after Mulgai, this is the next spot at the beech tree in where you can use the tap facilities to fill up your water bottles. Well, the diabetic ponies are, uh, they're tucked in out of the rain just now and there's loads of folk at the beech tree, so I have just grabbed myself a quick toasty and a can of iron and brew. Um, and then we're gonna get cracking on ahead of this crowd and get to drumming before the masses descend. I'll let you see what I bought. So not a bad wee lunch, I don't think. So a cheese and ham toasty. A wee bit of salad on the side to keep me healthy, and a can of iron brew, as always if you're in Scotland. Need to get your picture taken next to this wee lady, and her little four-legged friend as well. <laughs> right, I'm going to get the sunglasses on, ever the optimist, and let's get this toasty eaten and get further along the trail. Right, we'll speak to you as we get closer to drumming. 
So if for any reason you forget to fill up at uh, the beech tree, if you come to Turn Up The Beat, which has got a great selection of food, and I've grabbed myself a, a wee donut in the bag there, there's another tap just along at the red building that you can fill up for free. So I'm going to enjoy myself a wee, I think it's a Nutella donut, and that should fuel me on to Drummond. Right. <laughs> I'm going to go and enjoy this now. Oh my goodness, chocolate coma. So yeah, um, that's the first time I've popped into uh, Turn Up The Beat. I think next year if I do it again, I will certainly make that one of my stops. I always stop at the beach tree just because it's the first place to stop after Mulgai. Um, but yeah, the food in there looked absolutely fabulous. I've never stopped in. It's got a good wee honesty box outside as well uh, with pretty tasty cakes and stuff. Uh, of course, I'd bought my, yeah, hang on, another muddy puddle to work my way around. Right. Um, I'd had my toasty and salad and can iron and brew from the beech tree. And I thought, why not? You know, I'm on my holidays. Let's, uh, let's get in here and get ourselves pudding for lunch. Um, so, yeah, we've had... Uh, Nutella donut, which I think had like half a tin of Nutella inside it. Um, tin? Nutella doesn't come in tins. Half a tub of Nutella inside it. So, yeah, that's me all full of calories and ready to do this next section, which should take us to this beautiful wee village, which its name eludes me. But you'll see it on all the West Island wee videos. Um, yeah, we'll bring you back when we get there. I'm going to put the camera away for maybe an hour and just enjoy being in a bit of solitude now that we've passed all the masses of people that were stopped for lunch at the Beech Tree Inn. Right, we'll speak to you in a bit further on. Now for Hayes Outdoors, I know he loves a lock and latch, check this out. So when you pull this up, this wee stone rises up out the ground and the weight of it counter levers it pulls it back shut again. So if you're into your locks and latches, that's, that's pretty cool we get. That's us, we've, uh, we've left the path and we're now walking on the road section which takes you down through a beautiful wee village called Gartness which I'm going to spin you around in a second and let you see there's an honesty box here. Now, yes, I've had a bacon roll today, I've had a bottle of Dr Pepper, I've had a cheese toasty, I've had a can of iron brew, I've had a Nutella donut. Do I need a nice lolly? You better believe I do. So I'm going to stop at the honesty box. I've got a few point coins in my bag and uh, I'm going to treat myself to a wee ice lolly. It's just after one o'clock. Life's good. So hopefully you'll be able to hear me over the top of the, the river flowing down there. Uh, so this is the village of Gartness, beautiful wee village. And this is the honesty box. Let's have a look and see what they've got. Right. Every item in the fridge or freezer, one pound each, except cornetos, which are two pound. Ice cream's inside. Please lift the lid. There we go. Strawberry cornetto, get in. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy this as I wander along the last section, round to Drimmon Camping. I'm going to set up my tent, maybe have a wee afternoon siesta, because hey, why not? Uh, so this has been Gartness, beautiful wee village, uh, and this is Cornetto time. <laughs> yeah, that man on the bike's not got a Cornetto, I have. Right, we'll see you when we get up to Drimmon Camping.
that bridge back there last year when walking my brother John. Uh, we were almost at the Trolls Bridge and we heard this horrendous noise. And when we got up there, there was some kind of bird of prey uh, devouring an animal that was still half alive. Uh, whether it was the troll getting eaten, who knows. But uh, yeah, right, drumming camping, half a mile. So that will put the total distance for the day uh, from the centre of Mogai to here at 11 and a half miles. I said 11 at the start of the day, but if you want to be accurate, it's 11 and a half from the Monolith at Mulgai to Drumming Camping. Right, half a mile to go and we'll be at the campsite and setting up. Right, we'll see you when we get up there. That's us, we're here. That's day one done. 11 and a half miles, or 11.3 miles it says on the watch. Um, and we're at Drumming Camping, so it's just before two o'clock, so we've made great time today. Uh, which means for the rest of the day, I can chill out, get the tent up, uh, maybe have a wee snooze before heading down at the village for dinner with Stuart and maybe Mary. Right, um, I'm going to go get the tent set up. <laughs> 